API gels <coughs> is the person out there with the monitor system station resource. Okay. <coughs> They've got in their catalog a whole eye gel kit. And so give them a plug because we just we, we we buy them at the university through that particular air, uh, company because they give us good service, but they also have the availability of products that we want. So they, they sell these in various sizes. So you can get an adult kit or a pediatric kit with different sizes in it. But here's our eye gel. And this video shows you the ease of doing this. Just go on YouTube and um, search for eye gel insertion or anything like that, and you'll see a ton of videos on how to put this in. Simple, and it requires absolutely no training. So uh, you can all do this uh, right now uh, by watching this couple second video. So here, this is an unconscious patient, obviously. It. He's just checking the breath sounds. Now you can hook your Ambu bag up to that and then ventilate the patient. And that patient's breathing through that. Very simple. And that's going to secure the airway. We'll just look at it one more time. So basically, you just shove it in there until it stops, and then hook up your bag. Very easy to do when you secure an airway. The other thing that you might want to consider are these king airways. These are also very easy to use. They come in different sizes, so again, depending on what size it says on the package, this size is for this um, range, weight range for, of your patient. So you have a, uh, a variety of these things. These have these two cups. Uh, so it requires a second step in the eye gel. You have to inflate these cups. This bottom cup is a blind end, and when you insert this into the patient's mouth, it goes right into the esophagus. It's too big to go into the trachea. So even if it hit the trachea or the vocal cords, it bounces off and it goes posterior into the uh, esophagus. And then you inflate this, and this seals the esophagus. So this is more protective than an eye gel because an eye gel doesn't protect you from regurgitation and aspiration. But this does because this goes into the esophagus and seals it off so it prevents regurgitation, so it prevents aspiration. So it's a more secure airway. And then <coughs> this area seals off the pharynx and then there's holes in between these two cups and that's where the air passes superglottically uh, to ventilate the patient. So it's inserted, that's what it looks like. Here's the vocal cords, here's the holes here, and you ventilate the patient. So I have a video that shows this in a variety of different uh, fashions. Basically, you just shove it in again until it stops. And then the second step, you have a big syringe and you inflate the balloons. And then you can ventilate the patient.
this just shows a fiber optic view. They, after the airway is in, they put a fiber optic scope down there so you can just see how it's ventilating the patient. So those are the patient's vocal cords through the side holes in the airway. You can see some of those side holes. And so you're ventilating the patient through those openings. So those are superglottic airways, and those are really the rescue airways you want to have, one or the other, uh, or both. Okay, it's very simple to use, and they come in a variety of sizes, and you don't need to intubate your patients in that setting for an emergency. You can secure the airway this way. If you're doing general anesthesia, um, it all if you're involved with 